multimedia personality, comedic commentator, songwriter, recording artist, spiritual leader, author, and actor. Larry D. Reed is the founder of the MBN Network, owner of LDR Enterprises based out of Atlanta, Georgia, and the spiritual leader of the Reformation Church of Atlanta. You can catch Larry Reed on the BET Plus original series, Kingdom Business, and on American Gangsta Trap Queens. Streaming online at BET.plus. Join with people from around the world praying 15 minutes Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 667-770-1402. Code 974-8029-POUND. Church Critic by Dr. Larry D. Reed. An examination of the Larry Reed Live show perspective. Purchase a copy today by logging on to LarryReadLive.com. That's LarryReadLive.com. Patreon.com forward slash LarryReadLive. Let me tell you why you should join. You will gain access to master level teaching and coaching, which includes Sunday morning prayer calls with Dr. Reed, Wednesday night breakdown with Dr. Reed, the prophets and care pastors, divine partnerships and networking with the like-minded community. Exclusive content, which includes daily posts, ranging in topics that are too expensive to share on Dr. Reed's public platform, including money, health and wellness, entrepreneurship, relationships, prophecy, prayer, and more. Become a member today by logging on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live today. Stay connected to Larry Reed Live. Take a moment and like the Facebook page, subscribe to the YouTube page and hit the bell. Text LRL to 404-999-7527. That's the words LRL to 404-999-7527. And get notified when we go live. Become a member of Patreon. Log on to patreon.com forward slash Larry Reed Live. Sign up, then download the Patreon app and turn on your notifications. Get connected today. We're about to have a conversation. Hey, everybody, I hope you're doing well. Let me know that you can hear me and that there's no feedback. I got a little heater on my feet, a little cold. I done got it too cold in my room. Um, I want to know what city and state you are watching me from. My name is Larry D. Reed, and I'm the host of Larry Reed Live, your most favorite digital entertainment news and talk show that's out here on these social media streets and the most credible when it comes to church news and church talk. Um <clears throat> Please let me know what city and state that you're watching me from. I'm not in the studio. I'm actually in my bedroom. This against the wall that um, you know, a lot of you guys like this wall. I'm going to show it to you. It goes all the way up. Uh, up, 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 up. It goes all the way up. My whole room has all of these um, handmade artifacts from the motherland. Okay, so all right, Kentucky, California, Florida, Madison, Orange Park, Florida, Delray Beach, Florida, Tacoma, Washington. Okay, that's West Coast, Atlanta, Cincinnati, Ohio, Pittsburgh. We got anybody in here from California? So I make sure we're from coast to coast before I get started. And if you are watching and you from another country, put it in the chat and let me know. Louisiana, Tennessee. I got to get down into Louisiana. Um, Tampa, Tampa. Hey, Dr. Dominicia. That's one of the patrons, actually stakeholders in the Reformation. Uh, L.A., all right, here we go. So I'm in California, Mississippi, so we're from coast to coast so we can get started. I'm going to have to put some pictures up to show you guys what I saw online and what was sent to me. 
so that you'll know what the hell I'm talking about. Um, but thank you for letting me know where you're from. Now, if you're on Facebook, I need for all of you to hit like. Only six people on Facebook have hit like, and there are 1,049 people watching between Facebook and, and YouTube. You see the problem here? And I, I want to help you with something. All of you that are watching me that want to be the most blessed you possibly can be. If you want to be the most blessed you possibly can be, you got to become a giver. And I'm not talking about just your money, but I'm talking about your time. I'm talking about your attention. I'm talking about your support. You have to really get into the mindset of waking up every day and contributing. So when I say Facebook hit like, I hope you don't hear me like you do these other vloggers and, and YouTubers. I, I hope you hear me like somebody that is really trying to teach you how to operate in gratitude. I know sometimes I fuss about it. It depends on the mood I'm in that day. Today, I just happen to be in a whole different kind of mood, and I'm just asking you to get into the world of benevolence and generosity. Maybe things will turn around for you. You always talk about how people treat you and talk to you, but how you treat folks. People just take from me and take, take. How many times you watch this show and haven't ever done $8.88 or $12.88? You know, so start looking at some of the stuff that you got going on. Maybe you are contributing to your own famine and lack thereof because of your dirt actions. Okay, so take a moment, <clears throat> and by the end of this live, somebody remind me to give you an opportunity to show how much you, you like Larry Live by sending that $8 and $12. Um, somebody remind me to do it before I sign off in case I forget. And somebody else remind me of telling you where I'm gonna be tomorrow supporting Travis Malloy Manifestation Conference. Remind me to say that too. Please don't let me get off without saying those two things, okay? Arkansas, wow, 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 okay. So 62 people now have hit like on Facebook, but I'm pretty sure more than that is watching on Facebook. So go ahead and you hit like. There are 1,270 people watching between YouTube and Facebook, and we need everybody, whether you're on YouTube or not, to hit like and participate in the chat. You gonna you coming to Marty Gatlin? Don't leave without seeing me. Please, I ain't seen you in a long time. And that's one, that's the one of the reformers. Yeah. If you're part of stakeholders or, or Celestial Circle, or you're a partner um, in Tier 2 in Patreon, uh, I know I call you patrons and Celestials, depending on what group you're in. But out here, I'm going to refer to you as reformers when you're in that group. If you're just a patron at Tier 1, I say patron. But when you're at tier two and you're in Celestial Circle and you stakeholder top 1% of the MBN network and the Reformation Church of Atlanta, I'm going to refer to you as reformers. Okay? He said, hey, Dr. Reed, apple of my eye. You the apple of mine too. Show Liz. Okay, now let me tell you what has occurred online. And this is going to be fairly interesting. And I'm going to try not to invite Jeremy to the live. So I was minding my business as I absolutely love to do and am wired to do. And I was sent a picture. And the picture that was sent to me was very interesting to see. Now, I'm going to put this picture up so that we can look at this picture together. This is the picture that hit online first. And this is a post from Dr. Matthew Stevenson. Dr. Matthew Stevenson, we have talked about on this platform so many times because he had so many of our moments, as well as the person that he's hugging, Prophet Brian Kahn. He posted this, and what is interesting to me, and y'all, I believe all of this is prophetic. What's interesting to me, he posted this with Prophet Lovey's new single in the background, and yet he's holding another prophet. Now, all three of these prophets, well, only a few others that we can name, who are very viral in the social media space. Prophet Lovey, look up there to the top, up under Dr. Matthew name. That's Prophet Lovey. Prophet Brian Corn has been held by Prophet Matthew Stevenson. Now, this is so interesting to me. And I see a lot in this, but we're going to continue to talk about this. So let's read what Dr. Matthew Stevenson said. 
It said, world, me and overseer Brian Korn are not enemies. I know that disappointed so many, but my recent allies have been unusual. I'm in a different season. Shut up, devil. And most of you Pharisees, he's a man like me with the story, a calling, a path. Good times to the unusual future. Be careful. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm typical. Matthew tickles me. He's, he's so swift at the mouth. Uh, be careful in these comments. Now, I want you to look at how Matthew embraced. You remember the viral picture of him embracing the light-skinned guy that he raised like a son um, and the one that he embraced before at the marriage ceremony? At that time, prior to me knowing what I know now, I was spot on. If you remember back then, I said, you can tell Matthew is an emotional man. He is a, a warm man. He is a man that is in his feelings. Do y'all remember me saying that? And if you were on back then, please sound off in the chat so these folk know I'm not lying. But I told y'all how this man was. And you can see it by the hug. Now look at Brian Carnes' hug and where his hands is placed at the small of his back and just hugging him in response to Matthew's hug. Thank you. All of you saying I remember. Now, do you see this? Somebody said they embrace and they match. Come on, Calvin Jones. See, see you, you must have been around here for a while. We're looking at everything. Prophet Lovey is providing the music, who's a viral social media prophet. These other two viral social media prophets. Look at the, the glasses that Karn got on literally would match Matthew's outfit. Now, mind you, I found out Matthew didn't even know Brian was on the program till right before he arrived. This was not planned. And this kind of embrace is telling, in my opinion, of a future. If, if you see and sense what I see and sense by looking at the colors, the embrace and love it in the background, put in the chat, I see a future. And ladies and gentlemen, this is what the church, and I'm speaking um, relevantly, this is what the church needs right now because the church needs a shot in the arm because it's dead, dry, humdrum, and it's just looking real unmoisturized. But when Karn and Matthew were popping social media, you open your computer, your phone every day, you were looking to see what they had said, what was viral about them, good or bad. And now we see the current viral social media prophet providing the music. And now these former social media prophets who was huge online meeting and embracing. I see a future. I see a future. I, like the old prophets will say before they start prophesying, I see, I see, I see, I see, I see. That is what I see there. And we're not finished because there have been some other prophets, bishops that have something to say. And we're going to look at those posts. So that's Matthew's post. Now, let's look at Prophet Brian Carnes post. Let's go. Okay, so Prophet Brian Carnes post says, Apostle Stevenson and I had the opportunity to sit down face to face and talk last night. It was actually the first time we were in the same room together. We spoke and held no punches one with another. 
But at the end, we walked away allies. It's amazing how so many people can be vested in the division of two individuals. But time has a big mouth and it always tells the story. Now that's the truth. That's a whole word in that. Watch out world, God is putting together his army. Glad to be the grace kid, a part of the grace camp. And then he tagged Matthew and all of that kind of going on. So far the scripture. <laughs> all right, so, and we're not finished because there are other things that I need to tell you because another prophet made a post and this particular prophet who is now a bishop, his post that he made was very cloaked and needed to be decoded and we're going to decode it together. And I'm going to tell you what I think about every drop of it like I have so far, but what's going on. But before I do that, I want to let you know if you're in the Atlanta area, you may want to come over to this event. It's the Manifestation Summit. You go to the travismalloy.com is the site for you to sign up so you can get your ticket and be there. There's a panel called Social Currency, and I have become a yes for this. I hope I don't regret it. I've become a yes for this, and I am going to talk about how to make social media your currency. And there are two other people <laughs> But three other people that is up here on this flyer. Y'all want to put in the chat what, what their name, who that, what their name is? So that I make sure I don't monk it up. One is Deanna Dixon. That's the female. Right beside me is, is Keith Dorsey. And then on the on the end is the funny guy I've seen online. He tickled me with somebody mess up his hair. Big sexy official. But I'm going to be doing uh, this alongside my, for my brother, Travis Malloy. But the event is going to last all day, I think. But I'm I'm not going to be there till six o'clock. If I get there an hour or so early, it's just out of the kindness of my heart. But all of these people are going to be there. You see Coach Stormy Wellington, Will, Real Talk Kim, Bobby Valentino. Um, Q Parker, Travis Jennings. I see there are a few more people that will be there. So I'm going to be there on tomorrow. All right, that's it. So go get your ticket from Travis Malloy, thetravismalloy.com. Now getting back to Prophet Brian Karn and Matthew Stevenson. So I'm reading through the comment section. Now this, let me, you know what? Let me tell you the truth about our community, the black church community. The black church. Oh, thank you. Someone said my skin is, is um, glowing. Thank you. I, I got a little bump here. I know it's a hair bump and one came in there. Oh, no, the Lord just won't. I ain't going to say the Lord. That's like my mama. It just seemed like life would have it. It just never let me have this a clear day, a clear day. But it do look pretty good, though. I have been drinking a lot of water. It's a little dot right there. Little one right now. I'm a little too bad. Anyway, somebody said, please go live at the event. Nope, they would have to pay me a whole different kind of check. Um, I don't know what the hell is wrong with us because two black men that are getting together. squashing their beef and making a decision to be cordial and to show courtesy and kindness. I don't know why this can be looked at as a bad thing. And I'm, and I'm going to go on record saying that anybody that see this and begin to be critical in a negative way may need to broaden and widen their lens 
because they're 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 too focused on something and i don't i'm not too sure what that something is but two black men are not shooting each other they're they're not reviling each other and being violent to each other and they're in the same work and in the same industry we ain't seen it in the generation prior but now we see it in this generation so what is the beef what was the beef and how did it happen well matthew stevenson came on the scene especially on social media facebook i need for you to hit like came on the scene and totally took over social media for a couple of years at the same time brian corn was still having viral moments but at this point his viral moments was for several different things but when Matthew came on the scene, it was all about how great his preaching, his teaching was, and his ministry growing. Then later on, Matthew's viral moments were more critical, something that he said over the pulpit or in the comment section um, that was less than nice and kind. Matthew's look is very urban it's almost model-esque it is fashion forward and he promotes wellness at least his look appears to be well like he's not an overeater like he's fit like he takes care of himself because he's slim he has long hair he wears his hair in cornrows and braids and changes it, and sometimes it's color. He has both his ears pierced and has other piercings in his ear. He's tatted. Everything is. He's tatted all up. He doesn't look like what you would imagine a prophet or pastor or apostle or overseer bishop of a work looking. So he's out there giving all that. His wife, too, isn't looking like a norm, your regular or ordinary, better word, first lady. So it was, a, it was a lot to take in, but it was at the right time because it was time for something new and popping. And they hit the scene and it was just working. Prior to that, Brian Karn had pretty much owned the viral social media for a profit space. And he'd done, Matthew that is, done a series with his wife. God, I don't remember the name of the series, but they turned it into a book. And it had everything to do with how you're dressing and how you're looking. Brian saw that. Because here's Matthew saying, it don't matter about your tattoos, your earrings, your hair, da 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 And Karn is saying, wait a minute. We're not going to throw away the past and the foundation and the look of holiness and the dress just because you are the new viral best thing. So it looked as if they're bickering back and forth online. And then we really got into the conversation when Matthew Stevenson preached at the Colgate Church, who are sort of known for some of these strict standards. And it was just very interesting to, to see and to hear all of this was going on. And you got these two men that are in the same age group who are representing two types of young people in the church. And it was just back and forward, back and forward, back and forward. And it was quite entertaining and interesting. And we talked about it here. That was the beginning of this social media beef. That is how they ended up not on the same wavelength. It was as if what they say and what they believe, as well as those of you in the chat, somehow or another put them on two different sides of the fence. And it was, it was just tension. 
where Matthew would preach, Brian wouldn't preach. Where Brian would preach, Matthew wouldn't preach. It's almost like people begin to choose Matthew over Brian. And then Brian went into pastoring and he was less on the road. And then Matthew's more on the road, still building all these churches, hiring all these pastors, these musicians and the artists. And it's almost like he he became his own industry. It's like he bankrupted the gospel music industry and employed everybody in his church. And then he had all these other social media influencers like Tiffany Montgomery, Genesis Warren, and more, and even some of the men, God, I can't think of them, who, who were working with him or in his church or in this ministry at some point in time, Matthew and Brian. You know, a lot of them, a lot of the people used to work with Brian was working with Matthew or people who weren't working with Matthew. Now they're fellowshipping with Brian. So all of that is going on. But then days ago, here they are face to face. And that face and face, I must say, I appreciate this backstory. Well, you know, I'm going to always give you the context. And um, very interesting that they met. I'm going to tell you something. I have sent word to Matthew, and I know he got it, that Brian Karn wanted to talk to him. And Matthew ran for years. <laughs> and let me tell you why I think he ran for years. And then I'm going to read you what this um, Bishop, another prophet, said online about all of this. Brian, I want y'all to see, and y'all know, I'm a Christian, but when it comes to African spirituality, astrology, some other practices, I got mixed all up in my Jesus. And Matthew is a cancer. I want y'all to sit with that. Apostle, Doctor, Prophet, Pastor Matthew Stevenson is a cancer. I did not know that when I was covering him years ago. Had I known it, I would have understood him a lot better. I would have still not agreed with what I didn't agree with, but I just would have understood it. This hug that was posted online is the hug of a cancer. Either cancer is going to full body embrace you like they want to take you to the bed or they're going to lay their head on their shoulder. It's going to be this, this thing because cancers feel, 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 feel. And if that cancer does not have a therapist and a good support group, what that cancer feel they're going to feel so deeply until it overtakes their entire being, especially emotionally. And a lot of times cancers can get torn by what happens in their life. So I'm, I'm really interested in knowing just how deeply Matthew has been affected by all of what he has lost and all of what has left him. But that's a whole different conversation. But I know Brian Karn for myself. Somebody look and tell me what Brian Karn is. What's his sign? Can somebody let me know what Brian Karn's sign is. Virgo. <laughs> of course he is. Oh my God, really? I think I asked him that before, but I can't remember. Okay, so now I know I've had my own one-on-one -on -one dealings with Brian Karn and also the Bishop Prophet, who I'm about to show you what they said all right. I know Brian Karn. The thing that these two men have in common is both of them are sensitive. Brian Karn is probably one of the most sensitive. Now listen to this. One of the most sensitive men I know. I repeat. Now y'all know. 
in my community, in my ministry, I got every type of woman and man on the spectrum from the left to the right. And I'm telling you that Brian Korn is one of the most sensitive men and persons I have ever met. Let me return Pete because it needs to be repeated. Brian Korn is one of the most sensitive human beings that I know. Can't take nothing. What's, what you mean, Reed? If he see online, that's why he can't be in the comment section. If he see online or anywhere something you said about him and there's a part of him in that moment that, that see you as someone significant or important, which I think goes for anybody, so much more if it's somebody of prominence, it bothers him and he wants to talk about why you're not seeing him for who he is or why you don't agree. But the reason why most people don't see his sensitivity, and I told him this, and I told y'all I told him this years ago, is because you get in the pulpit and everybody going to hell, you're crass to the musicians, to the people on the sound, you say in and everything, you fuss at the folk that ain't, that's helping you, you fuss some of, at some of the folk that you're praying for. What the hell are we supposed to think? The, and then if you get in a scandal or get in trouble, we don't really care. And we want to join the bandwagon to kill you because you mean anyway. And it made us feel bad about ourselves because we like a little pink every now and again. Or we like cheeseburgers more than what we should. Or we do some other stuff that just ain't right. Maybe we don't like white people. And you get in the pulpit and make us feel like we are dirt. And so the moment you do something, we're going to get you back. I think if you haven't been so mean over the pulpit, then when you did the stuff that you've done when it come down to the different women, we might want to show you a little bit more grace. We did you in the way we should have done Jamal Harrison Bryant, which I heard he was the reason why that Matthew Stevenson and Karn won't get in together and was pay playing both sides. But you ain't heard that from me. It's just a rumor. I ain't verified it. But I did. <laughs> Y'all don't know I miss them always on the back side. Oh, this man is an opportunist. And ain't nobody friend. Unless you got a puss and you're just a friend for the night. But anyway... So nobody really saw Karn for who he was. I didn't. I said, you mean as hell. When I first met him, I said that. The first day I met Karn face-to-face, the same day I met Genesis Warren face-to-face -face, because she was in his ministry at the time. I grabbed Genesis Warren and I just loved her immediately and nibbled on her jaw. It was inappropriate, but I asked first. I didn't just do it. I said, can I kiss you? She said, yeah. And I kissed her jaw and then, just like that. I instantly loved her. <laughs> had a conversation that day with Brian Kahn and Demetrius Senegal. Now, let's bring him into the conversation. The last time I discussed Demetrius Senegal on a broadcast was because he went live to address Brian Kahn. Brian Kahn and him was working together in ministry. And for whatever the reason, however it happened, Brian Korn and Senegal's wife. Let me, how can I say it? Brian and Senegal's wife sitting in the tree. F R U C K I N G. First come love, then. Don't know how that happened. But when Senegal found out about it, he took online. And it was a whole mess. Even took Brian Korn to court. Allegedly, it's been settled and, and monies have been exchanged. And now it is as it is.
that's some expensive pussy, Brian, ain't it? Because I think you had to pay. I don't know. Let me get out of that. Anyway. So then I cover that story. And most of you got introduced to Senegal then. Most of you had already known who Brian Kong was. Now, you said Genesis Warren is an absolute fine woman, in my opinion. Uh oh, Genesis, look at you. You got some secret admirers. Let me see if she, is she on the lab. Let me see if I'm texting. And see, I'm, I'm interested in Genesis Warren's point of view because she was under Stevenson and Carr. Um, I stayed at some expensive puss. Nobody calculates um, the price of puss when you're cheating. Well, Carr, Carr was, was smashing her and, like the, and allegedly and apparently probably maybe he had to pay Senegal as a result. That's some expensive puss. So I was, um, I'm wondering if Genesis is in this chat. Y'all let me know she's in here because I want to see her. I want to know what her point of view is seeing two leaders that she know in proper um, relationship now and talking. That'll be interesting. While somebody figured it out. Nancy, you got Genesis um, number. Let me call her. Wait a minute. She ain't asked the phone. She might be in prayer. Genesis Warren, I'm online. I got a question to ask you. I want to send you a link and you answer. You ain't got to get on camera because I know you probably got to do your hair, your makeup, and everything there. Yeah, I'll just don't just don't click the button where it says camera. All right, all right, no problem. Great. She's a yes, she's coming on. All right. I want I want to see what she, how she sees all this. And I think this is important. And the reason being is um, cause she worked with both of them. And in fact, I think she worked with um, Senegal too. Let me see, I'm sending her this link. But while we're doing that, I'm gonna read you what Senegal posted on his page. All right, let's do that. It says, y'all would celebrate if Satan posted a picture with Michael the Archangel. The comments would read, glad y'all squashed that thing over Moses' body over in Jude 1 and 9. Woo, look at these two mighty angels coming together. Hell is in trouble. Satan is still Satan no matter who he posts the picture with. Always remember, while change is possible, it only comes via repentance. Repentance is only possible through godly sorrow. The evidence of a repentant heart is not seen in the post. It's seen in a consistent posture. When someone wants you to believe that they have changed who their pattern changed who their pattern has proved them to be, just respond, we'll see. Because time does eventually tell. Repentance produces fruit more than it does post. P.S. The reprobate will never repent. They'll only represent themselves to look repentant. Now, ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know, I want you to know that Senegal just read the whole hell in heaven up out of Brian Khan. That post had absolutely nothing to do <laughs> with uh, Matthew. It was an opportunity to read Brian Khan and to say that he does not believe that this moment should be celebrated. It's almost as if he was irritated by the celebration of Karn and Matthew being together called makes Karn look like that he is a do-gooder. But before we get into that commentary, I, I want to ask Prophet Apostle Pastor Genesis Warren how she felt when she saw this picture because she has had a spiritual 
covenant at one time or another with, with both Brian Karn and Matthew Stevenson. She's here. All right, we are on. All righty, can you hear me? I, you were loud and clear. Okay, great. So I want to ask you a question. Ben, that you know both of these men of God, how do you view, see, feel, think about the squashing of the beef? I think it is absolutely amazing. Um, I, I have a deep love for Apostle Matthew Stevenson. Um, we just recently reconciled as well. Um, and I also have a deep love for Prophet Karn. I've known Prophet Karn for over 15 years, literally. Um, and so putting our differences aside and all of that, I think this is a win for the kingdom. I do. I think it's a win. Genesis, did you see how you could take Brian's glasses, put it on Stevenson? There he could you could take Brian Coat, put it on Stevenson. The outfits matched, and the song that was being played in the post on Matthew's post was by Prophet Lovey. Prophet Lovey is sort of like the new viral online prophet when Karn and Matthew were in the time prior the most viral online prophets. What did you think about that? I think it's powerful of a futuristic emergence and also regardless of personal feelings and shortcomings, there will never be a day where Apostle Matthew Stevenson's voice and mandate isn't needed. And the same thing for for Prophet Brian Karn. They are needed and they are necessary for now and the future. Like I said, once we put once we put aside our offenses and what we think we know or even what we know and just allow God to be God, these guys, they are necessary for now and the future. And you definitely cannot erase the history um, that they've made in the body of Christ. You cannot erase that. No matter how offended you are, they may not be your cup of tea. You cannot erase history. Mm. Yeah. So, what, so what do you say to the people that say, but Brian is a witch, but um, but, that, but Brian copied the witch, but... Um, uh, Matthew Stevenson is full of scam scandal and and you know and, and viral videos and people came out to speak against them. What what do you say to people who are still holding on to what it is that they did or people think they did? I think it's very hypocritical because when you look at people like the A.A. A. Allens, when you look at so many of our forefathers, they had scandal. The only difference between them and now is that there is social media. You know, back in the day, things was in the newspapers and some things never made it to the newspapers because they paid people off. Um, and so just like they were our heroes and we gave grace, we have to give grace. Prophet Karn became famous, I think, at 17 years old. You know, Apostle Stevenson became famous in his early 30s. And so they they were inspiring us. And then they were growing as well at the same time. You know, they were our modern day heroes, but they were still being perfected at the same time. And so the same grace that we desire to have is the same grace that we must extend. Mm. Yeah, same grace. Apostle um, Warren, you're talking mighty good. Same grace. We all need that grace. And don't get me wrong, I was wounded. I had my share of um, things that I encountered when I moved to Chicago. You know, I once too was disappointed by Prophet Karn. But mm -hmm. once I laid my offense aside mm -hmm. and I became their, their intercessor instead of uh, magnifying their faults, the Lord really began to deal with me and he showed me me. And so once I stopped being their accuser and I became their intercessor, the Lord began to work on me. And I was confident that if I never speak to these guys again, you know what? I'll, I'll, I will be their intercessor so I can have a conversation with Apostle Matthew Stevenson as if nothing ever happened. I can have a conversation with Prophet Khan as if n nothing ever happened because if we're going to be saved, let's be saved for real. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. That is so interesting. Uh, I, I, I mean, and and to I forgot about that that you actually had a, a fit, you were offended or hurt or wounded by in both ministries. Yes. So, 
And so you really showed us how to handle church hurt. And for me, because even when I was in Chicago, the Lord told me, the Lord said, this is not about him. This is about you. When I first met Apostle Stevenson, I met him because he became the overseer of the church that I was a part of in Memphis. I had never heard of him before. He became my overseer um, and he just fell in love with me and and, and vice versa. And um, I still was battling with the father wound because if anyone knows Apostle Stevenson, when you get in his presence, he has this energy to where he just makes you feel like a kid. And so because I had my own father wound and he is so fatherly, I was looking for something out of him that I just don't think he had the capacity to give me at that particular time. And the same thing with Prophet Karn. Sometimes we can place um, expectations on people where they just either they don't have the capacity at all or they don't have the capacity for you. And it's okay. So I first had to deal with my father wounds and with my own rejection. And once I went through the necessary therapy that I need and once I started um, really maturing and becoming, you said, I said, you know what? I can't put the blame on them. I was looking for something from them that only God and myself could give. And mm -hmm. when I say myself, I mean getting the necessary help that I needed. Yeah, we should look at our leaders, our pastors, as aid, especially those of us that come from broken homes, have a father fracture, yeah, or mama's drama and trauma. I think that we should look at the church and the pastor as a foster family not a replacement for the father and the mom or the brother you didn't have. Because yeah. I think when you do that, you set yourself up for being incomplete again, or wounded again, or harmed again, because men and women of God are not perfect. And certainly the people of God that come to the church are not. Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. And and one thing about it is that I've never been a person that would leave a leader because of their proclivities or because of, you know, they made a mistake or even because of their thorn or because of their weakness. You know, me choosing to disassociate myself was I won't even put the blame on them. It was because I needed to do the work for me. Mm. Yeah. And I love them. And I think this is absolutely amazing. And mind you, I have not spoken to Prophet Karn since 2020. So I'm not saying this as if we on the phone every day. I have not spoken to Prophet Karn since I resigned in September of 2020. Now, I've spoken to Apostle Stevenson several times. And like I said, we've reconciled and all is well. But I believe in the church. I believe in the future of the church. And regardless of if we want to embrace it or not, Matthew Stevenson is necessary. Brian Karn is necessary. Prophet Lovey is necessary. Larry Reed is necessary. You all are necessary. Mm -hmm. Genesis Warren is necessary. Okay, now one last question before I let you go. I don't want to buy this too much. I read the post from Bishop Demetrius Senegal. What do you think about that? I love Bishop Senegal. I do. I love Bishop Senegal. As a matter of fact, I was introduced to Bishop Senegal through Prophet Karn. So we were all you know, like family, we would go to Prophet Karn's house and cook and just have a good time. Those those were amazing times. Um, this is just my personal opinion. I, I, I believe, and I could be wrong, but I believe that, you know, Bishop Senegal's um, response could be a little laced according to his own experience. Mm -hmm. um, and that's all I'll say about that. Okay. Yeah, I think that's nice and that's fair and true. I think that's nice and fair and true. Okay, thank you so much, Genesis. All right, thank you. Bye bye. bye. Wow, she said some great things. I love that going from accuser to intercessor. That that's a lot to bite. That's a lot to chew, but it's correct. Oh, I, I, I'm not going to say correct. Um, I think I think it's powerful, and I also think it is. Uh, possibly a way to come to some healing if you have been traumatized or wrong or, or done improper. Maybe those of us that have been hurt in the church or hurt by a leader, dropped, rejected, infected even, maybe we should go into the word of let go because that can be transformative for us personally 
And we can also do like she said, go from accuser to intercessor and look at the situation or whatever you endured or whatever you went through, look at it as a step and a, um, a space, a moment in the entire journey to your wellness, to your maturity and to your prosperity. Let's do that. I think that'll be good. All right. Each and every one of you that are up here, if you need somebody to pray with you and to give you the word of the Lord in response to you helping us build the MBN network with your $8.88 donation or $12.88 donation. If you go ahead and do that right now in the memo section, put your phone number and then beside the phone number, put three letters, L-R-L, capital letters. And someone is going to be calling you, praying with you, and giving you the word of the Lord. If you are watching and you want to develop your prayer life, and you should want to develop your darn prayer, prayer, prayer. <clears throat> Hold on a minute. Let me get it right. Prayer. Yeah. All right. That's a little better. I um, want to develop your prayer life. You should join our prayer call. Join with people from around the world praying 15 minutes Monday through Friday at 8 a.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 667-770-1402. Code 974-8029-POUND. All right, so make sure you do that. Go ahead right now. Do your $8.88 cent, $12.88 cent in the memo section. Put your phone number. We can't call you. And then put the letter LRL so that we can call. And thank you for supporting the platform. And the way that we say thanks is that we pray with you, um, a prophetic prayer, and then a word of prophecy. Let me see what y'all saying in the comment section. Uh, let me see here. Okay, I'm seeing somebody say something about. Um, let me see what y'all saying. All right, it says chest to chest. No, chest meat to chest meat, stomach to stomach, waistline to waistline. I'm just saying that was a very intimate embrace. It was intimate. Yeah, I don't see nothing wrong with that. I mean, it do look like it was peen tip to peen tip. But under the circumstances, we know that Brian Karn, not saying we know something different about Matthew, because that's not the case. He's a married man. And Brian Karn, we know, loves puss. I'm talking capital L-O-B-E. Absolutely love puss. So the fact of them being peen tip to peen tip, I can guarantee you they were soft and shriveled up and laying to the left. <clears throat> Somebody said, I find Opposite Prophet very interesting. That is his nickname here. But I know him from personal dealing. And he, he's a nice guy. I mean, would I trust him around um, my wife if I had a wife? Nope. Mm -mm, sure wouldn't. <laughs> but, what, but in all honesty, if she married to me and she giving another person the time of day, I'm... I'm going to be asking me some questions and hustling questions versus paying attention to him. Yeah. Yeah. Let me see what else y'all saying. Uh, Elder Glenda Cooper says, you want us to pray with you and you are super messy ma'am. Who is this young man? Who is this? Let me see a picture. Oh, Jesus. You are Elder? Baby, you like your funeral was yesterday. I'm praying for your health because you are not well. Oh, no. Everybody pray for Elder Glenda Cooper. Um, and pray, pray for his healing. Pray for his healing and for the wig. Pray for the wig. And this, what is this that he got on? Oh Jesus. I think that's a that's that's a trans woman. That's not no woman. Not no not no biological woman. That's a trans woman. But you just um go to hell. That's what you do, elder, and be a elder, a elder in hell. All right. 
because that's the only place you're going to be able to preach looking like that. All right. <clears throat> All right. So he said, give me that, that run one more time. I want to know what I did. <laughs> uh, let me see. Let me see now. Oh, yeah, she brought that one, Jeremy. That one, me. That one, Jeremy. <laughs> Ain't to let Jeremy get get up. You know, I kept it nice. Yes, yeah, dead and buried. All right, so let me see what else are you guys asking or saying? Uh, let me see. Y'all laughing. I ain't asking questions. You want to catch us up? No, you're going to have to rewind, um, Kyle. I'm finished. I'm about to sign off right now. But you can make sure you do your $8.88 before you leave. All of you that come over here wanting to know stuff free, I bind you. And I coat you in gasoline and I throw you into the lake of fire in the spirit until you surrender that offering. <laughs> That's not the spirit in which you should give an offering. So I'm just playing. Um, y'all ain't asking questions. Y'all reacting in the comment. Okay, I'm going to let y'all go. It's done been 56 minutes in the darn way. God bless America. Bye. And see y'all later. Oh, don't forget Travis Malloy event. If you are in Atlanta, go over there and sign up and meet me over there at this event. It's going to be a great event. Travis, the Travis .com. Go ahead and sign up. Of course, if you're in Patreon, you're going free. I tell y'all, Ben, my Patreon comes with benefits. Y'all don't be listening. Y'all don't be listening. I be trying to tell y'all, come with benefits. Y'all don't be listening. Y'all don't be listening. Y'all don't be listening. All right, make sure you go pick up. Um, you ain't talking about nothing. Last single I release. Turn it up. Get real boastful. And when it comes to your enemies running their mouth about you, just say you ain't talking about nothing till every part of you believe it and you go and sleep really nice. All right. See y'all later. Goodbye. <laughs>